Hello at last, Lex Lang. Hello at last. I know it's been a long time coming. I, I appreciate your perseverance. <laughs> as I am Sebastian Ochoa. As you may recall, I have autism. We meet at last, Lex Lang, a.k.a. Jagged Stone from Miraculous Ladybug. That's right. Jagged Stone, man. He's like this. He's talking like this. He's like, rock and roll, man. <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> I've been yeah. waiting a long time to finally get in touch with you, just like my best friend on Facebook, Chris Mayick, did a few days ago. Very cool. Yes. He's like the whole reason why I want to interview you and so many others, including your wife, Sandy Fox. Because of what he did, he motivated me into getting in touch with you and others. That's great. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> I have lots of questions I've been willing to ask you. All right. Let's go. We got 27 minutes. Let's do this. <clears throat> Tell me, <laughs> how is it like being a voice actor in many animated shows? How is it like? Well, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, I, I love to act. And so anytime I get a chance to act, that's a good day on, in my book. So, um, you know, of course we have to audition, you know, that's what it's like. We, we get an audition from our agent and we submit the performance or the ideas that we have, you know, as part of the audition. And if we're really, really lucky, we'll get a call back. And sometimes We'll even get cast in the part. And so when we do, that's a great day too. And then we go to the studio and we record. And depending on what kind of project it is, the recording is always a little different. But um, yeah, that's that's the basics of it. We do a lot of auditioning and then we get lucky and we get cast in things. Yeah. I see. So this is what makes you good at it. Which leads me to one most important question. How did you get into voice acting? How did I get into it? Well, that's a good, that is a very good question. Um, the short story is that I have a friend, his name is Bentley, and he's a really nice, he's an on-camera actor and a teacher. And um, we became really good friends on a movie together, became roommates. And then he went to do another movie in Vancouver called Susie Q. And this one of the stars of that movie was a woman named Amy Jo Johnson. And she plays the pink Power Ranger on like the original Power Ranger show. And we all went out to dinner. And while we were at dinner, on the way back, we were walking back. I started goofing around and doing voices and doing a little bit of a stand-up routine that I used to do. And she said, you'd be a great voice actor. And I really didn't know much about what voice actors did back then. It was a long time ago, long before you were born. This was 27 years ago that I started doing this. And... Back then, you know, there was no voice acting in video games. There was no anime yet. There was no, there was no really much of anything. There was just a few words here and there in, a, in animation. And then there was like stuff like Power Rangers where people would do characters and their voices on top of the people in the suits, you know. And so I said, well, I, I'm open to it if you want to introduce me to somebody. And she said, well, you know what? There's a thing called a loop group on the power rangers where the actors come in after it's all edited and they do the people running away from the monsters or the people at the cafe or in the background at the library, whatever, it's all background stuff. And so she introduced me to a guy named Scott page Pactor, and he was the producer on the power rangers. And we had a nice interview together and he said, I think you got what it takes kid. Let me give you a break. And so he gave me a break and I started doing the loop group for power rangers. And through that, I was able to show what I could do. And I ended up getting another part on the subsequent season called Power Rangers Turbo. I got a part called Rygog and Larago, the little wizard. And then the next season of, not season, but the next iteration of Power Rangers was called Power Rangers in Space. And there I did a character named Ecliptor. And so I play, play that in Power Rangers in Space. And then from there, you know, I was, I had met my, current wife, Sandy Fox, as you mentioned, and um, she helped me get an agent and she helped me put my demo together. And she kind of guided me along the way because she'd been doing it for a few years already before I met her. And uh, then I started getting Western animation like the Batman and Justice League and Legion of Superheroes and shows like that. And then video games kind of started coming up 
And I started doing video game characters like Dr. Neocortex and, you know, other characters. And at the same time as all that was happening, anime was starting to launch. And so back then there were shows like Ruroni Kenshin and Digimon and things like that. And so I got parts in both of those shows like War Greymon, War Greymon, you know, I got to do that. And I got to be Sonosuke Sagara in, in Ruroni Kenshin and, um, you know, and then it just, you know, everything was growing, growing, growing. So I was lucky enough to be able to audition for a lot of the stuff that was growing. And I was even more blessed to be able to actually get parts in those things. Yeah. So that's how it all started. I see. So this is why you got into voice acting because of the things you begin to experience since that very day that you told me about. That's but true. anyway, <laughs> speaking of all the characters that you have mentioned to me, <laughs> I have many questions about them, but <clears throat> in the show Naruto Shubiden, which character do you prefer to play as? Toshi or Hayati? Um, uh, Teuchi is the ramen. Uh, he owns the ramen shop and he's always fun to play um, because, I, you know, we were trying to find a voice for him <laughs> and we thought, you know, it, it was the day I was kind of coming up with it, I, I had seen a clip of one of the Muppet shows where Rolf the dog, Rolf the dog, he sort of talks like this, you know, he's kind of got this. And then I thought, well, maybe if he, if I make him just like an elderly gentleman that has a little bit of that Rolf the dog in him, have some more, have some more ramen, Naruto. So he sort of sounded like J.K. Simmons or somebody, but Rolf the dog too, you know? So I was like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. And so I picked that. So that's a fun role to play. Now, Hayate Gecko, he's the proctor of the fights. He calls all the fights and he had a little bit of a sub story, but eventually, you know, his character was sort of betrayed in the long arc of the story. I won't give out any spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen how he ends up yet, but um, that was a fun one too. He had a mysterious cough. That character had like a mysterious illness where he was coughing all the time and uh, nobody ever found out what that was. So he would just say like, next up, Naruto, <laughs> you know? And so he'd always have this cough and nobody ever figured out what that was. He did not die of that cough. Let's put it that way. Um, but uh, which one did I like doing more? I, I don't know if I could pick a favorite because they were so different, but I always felt there was a lot more heart to the Teuchi, um, the ramen owner. He always seemed to be a lot more friendly and had more heart to him. So I enjoyed that, I think, a little more. I see. So this is what you like about playing those two characters. Your favorite is Toshi, <laughs> which is very good, actually. But what I can tell your performance is quite very excellent when you play the two characters, actually, especially when it comes to anime. Am I right? You're right. You're right. I, I love doing it. And so I think that brings out what you call excellent characters. You know, when you really love doing something, you can't help it can't help but shine. You know what I mean? Like even what you're doing now, like you love doing the interviews and you're shining right now. Like I can just see it in you, you know, like that, 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 that energy in you is alive and vibrant and so that's the same thing that happens to me when i get to play a character of any kind i get to the studio and i'm like yes i am alive i'm feeling vibrant today you know i get to work i get to act you know am wow. i right wow that's very good that's yeah. something that's between you and me yeah. because we both have motivations in our own ways but that's anyway <clears throat> What was the biggest thing when you played Dr. Neil Cortex in Crash Bandicoot? What was the biggest thing? What do you mean? Like, what was your, what was the biggest thing? Like your favorite thing about playing the character okay. in that video game, the franchise? Okay. Yeah. I've been playing him for 18 years now since Twin Sanity was the name of the first game I ever played. Uh, played Dr. Cortex in, I mean. And uh, I did all the games after that. And then they remade the first three not too long ago called the Insane Trilogy. And so I got to play Cortex in the first three, too. I think the one that I didn't play him in was uh, Wrath of Cortex because they didn't remake that because it, it didn't do well as a video game like back when it was originally put out. It's a fan favorite. I know a lot of people like it, but not a lot of people got it or bought it back then. And um 
So I don't think they've remade that or remade any versions of that since I've been doing it. But uh, I love playing the character because when I started playing it, they decided to take a, a little bit of a new direction with it. They said they, they liked him being an evil scientist, but they wanted him to be a little funnier. They wanted to bring comedy to it. And they wanted to do that in the form of him still believing that he could conquer the world, but he just didn't have the skills to do it. And so he was always making a mistake or bumbling something up or the machine would break down or he would like have bad luck at the worst time, you know? And so they wanted to bring comedy in as a result of that. So they said, if you want, make him a little more bumbly, make him more flamboyant. You know, they wanted him to be just like broader of a character. So, Oh yes, crash, you know, like that kind of stuff, like where he would be like, you know, um, belaboring over some something simple. Oh no, how are we going to get there, Crash? You know, like he would always be not whining, but, uh, you know, uh, finding ways to, you know, have uh, obstacles appear before him over and over, but be comical about it whenever that would happen. So we got to improvise a lot with that. And so that's probably the most fun I have when I do that character is I get to be that outlandish, really wants to take over the world, but just doesn't have the skills to do it. <laughs> I see. So that was your favorite thing about playing that character because of the whole funniness you begin to bring up to that character, which yeah. you made me laugh a lot with that character. Oh, good, but, good. And speaking of funny characters, <clears throat> how is it like playing Jagged Stone and Miraculous Ladybug? Wow, that's quite an intro. Um, <laughs> um, it's really fun. It's one of one of the most fun characters I get to play right now in in different shows because he's kind of a cross between like his name is Jagged, which reminds me of Mick Jagger. I don't know, it probably reminds other people of Mick Jagger. And Jagged Stone is kind of like this cool rocker. So I kind of took like what Mick Jagger is from the Rolling Stones right? Jagged stone, rolling stones. You know, I was trying to put together that, but then I combined it with like the personality of Austin powers a little bit like, yeah, baby, you know, we're going to do it right now. You know? So when you put them both together, it's like, I'm jagged stone rocker. I'm the best rocker in town. You know, like, I want to have a great time, you know? So that's kind of how the character developed is I, I put like a real rocker with like a totally funny character and when you combine them, it's like a lighthearted rock and roller that, you know, people like to watch and it's fun to play. I see. So this is why you like to play that character. For what I can tell, I've seen a lot of Miraculous Ladybug's episode. And I must say, you are quite per excellent at that British voice, especially with the most recent episode I've seen called Crocodile, where Ooh. you where you, my friend, you were akumatized along with Nika Forterman and you fought against Christina V, President Braverbrook, and most importantly, Reba Buhar. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, but anyway, <clears throat> what was your favorite thing about playing the character Gumon in Lupin the Third? Yes, Goimon is a great character to play. Uh, he's a samurai. But he's also, you know, he's he's part of this group of thieves. And so, you know, he's a, he's a little bit dishonorable in that sense, but he really likes to try to bring honor to that group of thieves, too. And what's really interesting about that character is when I'm brought in to do him, I'm asked to play it really flat, not emotionless, but just really like ultra zen. So, like, for example, I always say this. Like if he were leaving a burning building instead of like, we got to get out of here, you know, like instead of that kind of stuff, he might just be like, I believe we should leave the building loop on like just very nonchalant, almost like Spock, you know, like that kind of fashion him a little bit after the logical Spock. So everything is very logical and very Zen. And he's very, he's very like centered no matter what. So everything could be turmoil all around him, but he's going to find the, the calm centered way to approach it. And so when you put that against all the other characters that are real flamboyant and Tony Oliver, you know, doing this and that and Epcar doing Jagan, you know, like he's like, you have all these big personalities When you put 
Goemon in there, it fits just right. It's that last puzzle piece that brings it all into more of a Zen and, and, you know, it glues it all together a little bit, I think. I see. So that was your favorite thing about playing that character. But what I can tell, you were very excellent as that character, along with uh, Tony Oliver, Richard Apcar, Michelle Ruff, and so many great actors that were being casted into that franchise, like, for years. Yeah, very fun. Very fun one. Yeah. <clears throat> and speaking of things, but <clears throat> what was the best part about playing Dr. Doom in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Oh, yes, Dr. Doom. You have no idea what doom can bring. Yeah, he was a sorcerer and he had so much magical power and so much knowledge that no matter who was fighting against him, he saw them as almost like flies on his shoulder, you know, just like you're, you're no match. There's no one who can be a match for doom in his opinion, because he had all the power, all the knowledge, all the magic, all of that super sorcery that he could bring to any environment and so that was really fun to play that was really fun i also played him in uh, uh marvel heroes the video game marvel heroes and um it was great fun you know i had to audition several times to get that part i did the first audition i did a callback and then i did a two more recallbacks where we had to discuss uh, he's from latvia and so we wanted to discuss, like, will there be a Latvian accent? Will he do an accent? Will he sound like he's from Eastern Europe or something? And so we had to fine tune that. So it just barely, you can barely hear, like, you are no match for doom. You can just hear it in the background a little, but it's not like an overpowering accent. So that, um, that was something that was part of that audition process. But I loved it. It was great. I, I loved being Dr. Doom, yeah. So this is what you like about playing Doom. From what I can tell, you were a great villain at that point. And every fans of, of YouTube started liking your voice as Doom, you know, and the fans of the show. Yes. yes Just I to be that. sure. Oh, yeah. Which, speaking of, remember the voices that you showed me of Tony Oliver and Richard Apcar? Yeah. Your impersonations, of course. You remind me of two voice actors I've encountered, like... Kid Vendel Havel and Jim Maskamin, they told me that like, like Jim and Kiv, you too have the power of impersonations. How do you like doing impersonations of a lot of people, including Adam Sandler? <laughs> uh, well, you see, uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, doing Adam Sandler. No, um, I got started with that first when I was young. I was doing stand-up comedy, and I would always try to say, like, what happens if Elvis did this? Or what would happen if Sean Connery did this or that? You know, and I'd always put voices in. But later, when I, right after I started doing work on the Power Rangers and was getting my career going, I still didn't have enough work to quit my day job. And so I had to create something to make that happen. So I made a business card that said voice matching specialist. And I gave it to editors around Hollywood and said, hey, if you ever need somebody to match, you know, Christopher Walken or Sean Connery or Jack Nicholson or whoever those actors were at the time, I said, give me a call. And sure enough, my phone started ringing and I started being able to come and fill in a line here or a line there or put in some exposition about the story or whatever it was um, relating to. And that's how I started learning how to change my voice to sound like other actors. And it's a, it's a real art form. It's a skill. You have to be able to recognize where someone's pitch is. So if it's up high or it's really low or whatever, how much air is coming through. So if I want to make it so it's got a lot of air, air happening in my voice, that'd be more like a Charlie Sheen character, you know, something like that. Or if it's, if it's, you know, nasally, like, you know, yeah, like oh, like Owen Wilson has much more of a nasally character. He's like, wow, I never knew that. You know, so like you can find where it sits in the in your placement, how much air is happening. And the more I got better at doing that, finding out where to place it, the more different characters I was able to do. So that, that was a good question. Um, I I've used um, that uh, gift in many many situations. Um, I've been. I've probably voice matched a hundred different celebrities over the last 25 years. I yeah. see. Yeah. So this is what makes you good an impersonator. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I have another question, but which character that you have played in the past has been the most challenging to you and why? Um, I, th I think of three situations, but I think we only have time for me to tell one of them. So I'm going to tell the one about, um, hi, uh, I, I'm going to tell the one about um, the, the, the video game called Evolve. I played a character named Torvald in that. And he's like half Norseman, half machine. And when I got to the session, they said, you have, you know, I don't know, a, few, a couple thousand lines that you're going to do, but you have to scream them all. And so I literally had to shout at the top of my lungs in three different ways, like 2000 lines. And I, it took us three days to do it, four hours at a time. And each time at the end of that four hours, I was literally like, okay, I can't talk anymore. I screamed my voice out. And then the next day I'd come back and get to the generator. He had like a real big, deep voice. It was like, yes, we need more help. You know, like it was always screaming, screaming, but like I had to scream so loud that it was just, it was just throat ripping. And so that was the most challenging. Ooh, I see. So yeah. this is what's been the most challenging to you because of the things you have experienced be because of the thing you told me, correct? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. But um, there is one thing I really wanted to tell you, but what do you like to do before you got into voice acting? Um, I was an actor always. So before I got into voice acting, I loved to do stage acting. I did a little bit of on-camera acting. I was in a soap opera for a few episodes, and I did a couple of movies where I just played real small parts, but I, I did like three or four movies. Um, I love to play the guitar. As you can see behind me, I've got, you know, some drums, electronic drums and my bass guitar over there and an acoustic guitar. And, you know, I've got all sorts of musical instruments. I've got a keyboard that's over here, the piano. And um, so music has been in my life for years and years and years. I love playing music and I love to play cards too. poker. I love to play poker. And I'd say that those are my main things I like to do outside of voice acting. I see. So this is what you like about, about before you do the voice acting thing. Yes. You no, know, I'm well, no, go ahead. I was going to say we're, we're rounding out the half hour here and yeah. you have any final words or questions or anything but you want to actually, there are a few words I wanted to say before okay. it. I have two more things I want to say. One, would you like to follow me on Instagram and Twitter? Since I've been friends with so many voice actors, including Dina Sherman and, uh, Dorothy Fawn and Steve Stalley and many others. And also because they recommend you doing it since they wanted you to be a part of my group. Sure. Thanks. And number two, would you tell your wife, Sandy Fox, about our interview together in case if I tag her on Instagram, Twitter, and most importantly, Facebook, and that I want her to accept my friend request, just like she accepted Chris Mayix's request. I'm sure she would love to do an interview with you. I'll talk to her when she gets back home a little later. I'm so I'm super happy you said that. This is why you are one of my favorite actors, along with so many others I get to encounter. Great. Any, any any closing words? Well, there are there is some, but <clears throat> well, it is such an honor to finally meet you at last, Lex Lang from Facebook. And it was so nice talking to you. And thank you for taking your time to speak to me. I really enjoyed talking to you. And I hope to see you through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, just like the others. That sounds great. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me. I appreciate you reaching out and, and you know, making a great time, Sebastian. It was, you did a great job with the interview, and you should be proud. It's such an honor you get to say that. And that's why I really liked to wanted you to follow me through Instagram and Twitter. That way I can finally cast you into my show when the time has come and I'll never forget it. Well, it's that's nice to be way. your friend. That's the most important part. Thank you. And I was hoping you might say that. Well then I guess I'll see you through Instagram and Twitter, my friend and Sounds Facebook good. also. Sounds great. Then. Okay. Well, 
so many great thanks to you and may you have a beautiful rest of your afternoon and i look forward to seeing you and all your successes on facebook instagram and twitter thank you and tell your wife i said hello and that i want her to be friends with me like chris mayak did i will thank you okay have a good wonderful day. day okay bye bye